Welcome to Drag Strip 66. There would never ever be anything like Drag Strip again. It was, a, it was a period of time that could never, ever be recreated. What Drag Strip has always been has been in the moment. If you weren't there, it's like Woodstock. If you weren't there, you don't know what it was. We had this sort of no rules rule. This is one of the funnest, greatest clubs, and this is legendary. Full of love. This is, this is what's so beautiful about this place. It's all love. This is living art. The vibe of Drag Strip is just like fun, freaky, and free. Fabulous, friendly, fun. The best years. Fun, laughter, and exhausting. I had some of the best times I've ever had in LA at Drag Trip. I love Drag Trip. It's, not, it's hard not to be enthusiastic about it. I'm sorry. Drag Trip 66 was this uh, club that happened once every month on the second Saturday of the month. Back then, the community was very different. Um, Silver Lake had the reputation of being like the old Leather Queen crowd because you know it had been the underground gay community since the 50s and 60s. And it was in my neighborhood. I didn't have to travel to it. It was, you know, it, it made my neighborhood a great neighborhood. Well, Rudolfo's was very important to Drag Strip 66, that's where it started. It was a really fantastic, unique, and special experience that happened once a month, and I look forward to it every month. And I would have planned my whole month around it. I'm embarrassed to admit that a little bit. <laughs> the space uh, was such that there was the dance floor, the bar, and then there was a lounge area, and then there was an outside patio. And you know, we came in with some alternative music, alternative vibe, and it made an amazing thing. We've really got something here, and people get it. They get what we're doing. And I wanted it to sound like quintessentially Los Angeles or California or Westy Coasty. And I thought of Route 66 and Sunset Strip 77 and put that together, and that's how the name came to be. And it was even like one of those religious moments where I could see the logo in my head. I was like, <laughs> it has to be the Route 66 sign. The music was fantastic. Paul B. always spun, eclectic, cool, crazy, run DMC to like, Courtney Love and all and disco music and share. It was pretty awesome. As far as the shows, I mean, I myself had never seen anything like it. I mean, these weren't drag shows where people were lip syncing. They were singing live and doing just the most incredible performance art pieces set to popular music with incredible themes. Um, it was just amazing. And it was always around a specific theme that was uh, taken from popular culture. I thought that what made Drag Strip such a miracle was the themes. I guess my favorite Drag Strip theme had to be the Bond Girls. The Vegas in Space was so amazing. Catholic School Girls Night. Andy Warhol, 60s uh, theme. Mother Daughter Duos. Florence of Arabia. All that drag. Big hair, little black dress. Dead Divas was one of my favorites. Naughty nurses at Genital Hospital. Trailer Trash Love Shack. Night of a Thousand Jans. The Golden Girls versus the Facts of Life. 20,000 queens under the sea. The ladies of the 80s. Tranny, 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 Tranny Get Your Gun. Tranny Get Your Gun, that was a good one. I never looked at Drag Trip as a club. I looked at it as a party and family. So it just grew and grew and grew. Saber Summers. Hello, welcome to Drag Strip 66. <laughs> it wasn't even like a nightclub. It was like a, you know, it was like a masquerade ball and that, you know, the emperor had decided to put on, you know. And, you know, we were the royal family. Drag Strip was a club in the sense that people felt that they belonged. And it was very, it was very welcoming. And there were always, uh, there was always a, a great variety of people there. There were people in drag, there were people out of drag, there were straight people. There were very few straight men. 
but there were plenty of women who went there. All these different gradations and uh, subcultures within a gay or queer community, they all came together. They all had fun together. And even as a girl, I felt okay there. It was fun. It's the only place that I know that anybody can just be who they want to be and feel who they want to feel like. We're all freaks and we all get to like fry our freak flag and nobody judges anybody here. This was truly the place where you could express yourself and be completely bizarre and everyone would just love you. It lets everybody be who they are, show their creativity. They loved everybody that came through the door. And that feeling of we're glad you're here is what made it, I, part of what made it such a success for 20 years, to have the best club for 20 years, amazing. Thank you so much. Kind of crazy that a club has existed for that long and has any kind of uh, relevance. It's pretty amazing. But it says something very special about Gina and Paul B as people. They're very wonderful people. They provided a fantastic venue for people that didn't really fit the kind of stereotypical gay norm in Los Angeles, and uh, they did a fantastic job. Sometimes you just have to put a button on things. You just have to say, this was your moment, this was our moment. Love it, keep it in your heart. Nothing lasts forever. Diamonds are forever. Drag Strip 66 is not forever. I'll be sad to see Drag Strip end because everybody will be sad that it's ending. I'll be relieved that I don't have to be Gina Lochman anymore. Mr. Dan and, and Paul V, please let me tell you from the bottom of my heart, Thank you so much for the many memories that I will hopefully remember finally while watching this documentary because I was so drunk so many of those nights. I'm very much looking forward to this film. I can't wait to see some of the archival footage and I'm really excited and pleased that you're making this movie. I, I think it's an important document and it's, it's um, you know, part of history. Uh, part of everybody's history. It's not just part of gay history, it's part of everybody's history. So, in, in that sense, especially, I'm looking forward to seeing it. We're all wearing drag, no matter what. Think about all the people that you've met over the last 17 years that are in your life, that are in this room, that have shared this experience with you. And you're alive and you're here! I do not like to cry over the past. I like to look to the future. And that's why Drag Strip, I think, has lasted so long because a lot of you bitches always look to the future. We march forward with our brothers and sisters.